Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. It's Keisha Koo here, my loves. Welcome back to my channel. I'm so glad you returned. If you are a new subscriber, thank you so much for subscribing. Um, if you like this kind of content, please press the like button and share or leave a comment down below. I am a new YouTuber and I thank you so much. Every subscriber I get, every comment I get, every like I get helps me to grow my channel. And I appreciate you for returning. If you are a returner, thank you so much. And I appreciate each subscriber I have. It means so much to me. And um, let's go ahead and get into this. We're in part three of the Liberace, the deep dive. And we are going to be adding on to this. I will be doing a uh, a deep dive with Scott Thorson, um, the partner that li 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 Liberace. It is part of Liberace's life, you know. So I don't want anybody to think I'm doing any disrespect by covering him also. We are doing a deep dive into Liberace. So I think with anyone, you don't want to just tune into something and hear the same old stuff that you can read or hear anywhere so when you go you know when you want to really truly care about a person you want to share or that their fans or somebody wants to know more about that person especially those of us that you know that didn't get to know him that that well we was just kids little babies whenever he passed away and we just you know discovered him as we grew up to be young adults so uh we're going to kind of go into to that also and add it on to this doc series but we're going to get finished with the the main part of Liberace and then we'll add him in there and then we might do a little bit more you know dive into uh, Liberace's later life you know it, it, as you know I do more research but this is just kind of covering the basic deep dive of Liberace right now. Liberace, Liberace nearly died the day after JFK was assassinated and I do have to step in here and just say one thing and we're going to get right into it with no interruption is that if you are listening to me redo this part it's because on my last upload my voice was so gone that I know I did not sell myself so we're going to start off on this we're not going to start off on all the way on the mid part where I left off at but the later part so we're going to start off on this so no you're not hearing a re-upload if you do hear this um it, we're just going to go ahead because I don't want you to to get in here and think well she done talked about that on the second one but I'm just kind of going off where we kind of left off at the last time for anybody coming in on part number three Liberace nearly died the day after JFK was assassinated Liber Liberace was known for his elaborate stage costumes multiple wardrobe changes were a hallmark of his shows beginning in the early career in his early career Ironically, Liberace's clothing nearly cost him his life on November 23, 1963, while preparing for a show at the Holiday House in Pittsburgh. The pianist noticed that some of his stage clothes had become soiled with a blizzard of brewing outside of his hotel room. The performer fretted over his wardrobe. His customer, Bob Fisher, was busy on the errand, and the hotel, hotel staff wouldn't have the clothing cleaned by showtime. With the clock ticking, Liberace made a decision, which he called idiotic, in his autobiography. After purchasing a gallon of dry cleaning fluid, the star attempted to do the job himself. I could just, I'm going to add a side note, I could just say Liberace. <laughs> just, I don't know him. Just by watching his demeanor and him loving his costumes, he probably had this specific costume he wanted to wear that night. You know, he had a dozen of them. And he was like, oh my God, I can't, you know, I'm not, I gotta have this costume. And so he gets in there and he just tries to clean it himself. And there was a lot of detail that went into cleaning those costumes. You know, back, back then, I'm thinking it would probably be like two to three hours to clean a costume like that. Okay, so, but I could just imagine him, I know, y'all just listen to this and just think about him in your mind. You know, those big costumes and walking over and showing him doing his, his spin with his arm and that, that, you know, that cape, you know, and him twirling in it on stage and everything. But he has that special costume for that night and he's got it stuck in his head and he's, he, he needs to wear it. And so he's just fretting, running around the hotel, you know, the hotel room and just, or his little dressing room. He's thinking, oh my gosh, 
you know, I've got to get, I don't, I want to wear this. I, I can't wait that long. And so he just sits in there and starts trying to do it himself. And so that's just, that's just how he seems. You know, he just seems like he has something in his mind that gets stuck in it. And there's no changing it. And whatever the costume that was he wanted to wear that night, he was going to make sure he was going to get to wear it. So we're just going to go ahead and go on, on into it. After purchasing a gallon of dry cleaning fluid, the star attempted to do the job himself and unventilated confines of his hotel room. As detailed in Liberace's and America Boy, the entertainer suddenly feeling, falling ill lay down for a nap. Soon Liberace was roosted, out of, from, roosted from his sleep by Fisher, who, smelling the overwhelming fumes, chatted at him for cleaning his costumes himself. Liberace wouldn't make it through his performance. Rushed to a nearby hospital, doctors diagnosed him with the retinal failure brought on by carbon tetraclide. And I guess I'm pronouncing that right. Chloride. Tetrachloride poisoning. When his kidneys failed to resume normal function, Liberace was told to put his house in order miraculously. Uh, a side note, uh, my dad it told me a story and I just have to tell it because this is before I start reading this he talks about when Liberace almost died and I thought wait he almost died the time before or is he thinking you know something else in his mind you know I was born in 82 and I'm like well you know what time is he even thinking about because I didn't ever know, know that he almost died and he said yeah he said it was so funny you know he he almost died he wasn't talking about it was funny that he almost died he said that Liberace started giving away all of his belongings I guess you know and his he owned several homes and cars and jewelry and antiques and all this stuff and he just started giving it away you know I guess to all of his friends and different people and different it's because he thought he was gonna die and so he said he ended up living and he 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 didn't have hardly nothing left because he was giving everything away so when he left he said he went on a shopping spree and he started buying everything and, and like getting everything back and buying it back and I, I fell out laughing because as I'm reading this, you know, it didn't go into great detail. But I'm just imagining him because uh, he, you know, he knew more detail than I did because he was li he was living back in that time when he was performing and all this stuff. And whenever the news was the articles were covering him, and so um, he said, yeah, and he would wear big rings on his fingers. He had the every ring you could think of. And so. As I was reading this, it, it, it brought that back to my mind. I thought, oh my gosh, because it, it says on this part of the this uh, article that I'm reading into him that he goes back and he starts, he goes on a spinning spree as soon as he gets out of the hospital. So we're just going to go ahead and go along. I just thought I wanted to throw that in there. Uh, if anybody else has any stories that their parents told them about Liberace or their grandparents or great-grandparents, please put it in the comment section down below. I would love to know. Thank you so much. Okay, let's go ahead and get back to it. Liberace recovered with his brush with death. It left him a change. However, upon leaving the hospital, he embarked on a spinning spree that would last him an entire life. A changed man, Liberace, showered his friends and family with money and expensive gifts. I wish I was his friend or family member because I would love to be his friend or family member because that man had some taste. Liberace's attempt at a movie career flopped. Warner Brothers in 1950, Liberace was a hit in the concert halls, nightclubs, and on television. However, there was still one medium, the piano man, long to conquer. The movies, Liberace had appeared in a small role in 1950's South Sea Center, starring Shelley Winters, but by the middle of the decade, the musician yearned for a shot at the movie stardom. As re recounted in the Biography episode, Liberace and Mr. Showmanship Studio. Had Jack Warner caught Liberace's act in San Francisco and thought of his charisma would translate well to the big screen. Although both his friends and management 
warned him against the move. Liberace made his film debut in 1955 in Sincerely Yours. In the film, Liberace stars as a pianist, Tony Warner, a plunky musician who loses his hearing just before he's scheduled to play his dream gig at Carnegie Hall. Upon its release and reviews for the movie were mixed. Critics praised Liberace's patented so showmanship and sincerity, but know that the entertainer was nobody's very more. If anybody knows what that means, please put it in the comment below. <laughs> I was just wondering. I will look it up. Try to look it up later on. I'm just wondering: is that was that like a famous actor slash a actress or saying for someone that that really knew how to like put on a good you know show for the movies or? You know, was that comparison or what did that mean? So just put it in the comment below so just to let me know. Thank you. When the film flopped, Warner Brothers placed the blame squarely on Liberace's sunken shoulders. Okay, I've never, <laughs> I didn't know that you could, that would be like a thing to blame anyone for sunken shoulder, shoulders. I don't know what that had to do with it. Uh, okay, but we're going to go ahead and keep going. To ensure against another loss, the studios brought back Liberace's two pictures contract and turned Liberace would blame sincerely yours for the downturn in his popularity. Liberace, Liberace's life, life was plagued with libel lawsuits. Honey, there might be a plague, baby. But there, damn, we're going to get into this, but I already know off the top of my head, honey, nobody sued Liberace and won. Because, let me tell you, baby, that... that this man right here, he was not one you want to go against his character. And uh, they're trying to come out and say all this stuff about him, his lifestyle and stuff, and degrade his character in the in the tabloids that he did, he wanted his private life kept private. And honey, baby, baby, Liberace went out fighting, and he said he was going to sue them, baby, and he won. And, and I could just see him, before we get into this, going off on that stage with that cape on, and doing that big twirl, swinging his cape around, and he's on that stage, and he comes out, and he's thinking, look who's got you now. Yeah, look, I'm walking across this stage right now. The night he found out that he won the won against that tabloid, he probably walked across that stage, and he was probably thinking, yeah, baby, you brought me some more capes, you brought me some more diamonds, and some more sequins, and I'm laughing all the way to the bank while you're doing it. And then... then then he's also going to give a little bit to charity. But, baby, hey, look, hey, you don't see Liberace because Liberace is going to, hey, he's going to win, baby. He he sure did on this one. Now, we're going to go ahead and go back into it. Liberace's life off stage was marked by endless struggle to protect his privacy, considering the social and legal ramifications of being a gay man. In the public eye, in conjunction with his dedication to his Catholic faith, Liberace, despite his overtures to camp in his performances, vehemently insisted that he was an heterosexual until his death in 1987. Desperate to keep his secret life hidden, Liberace repeatedly challenged the press of accu for accusations and qu the press for questioning his sexuality in court. His first legal battle came in 1956 when the British tabloid, the Daily Mirror, objectively characterized him, the entertainer, as gay, referring to him as a luminous, quivering, giggling, fruit-flavored, mannequin, ice-covered heap of a mother love, which I don't even, I don't even know. That sounds like something that would be like in, in some kind of, uh, uh, a Dr. Seuss book, uh, forgive me, I'm sorry, you know, allegedly, you know, uh, just menacing, ice, you know, fruit flavor, mannequin, ice cover, heat, mother love, I mean, <laughs> just, I don't even know what that means, but anyways, Liberace fought back, hard denying that he was gay and soundly denouncing the gay lifestyle. The musician emerged victoriously after a 
three-week trial collecting over 22,000 in damages. In 1957, the notorious gossip magazine Hollywood Confidential published a story alleging that Liberace made an unwanted sexual advances on an unnamed male press agent. Liberace filed a $25 million libel lawsuit against Confidential. The magazine finally settled with Liberace for over $40,000, most of which the pianist, pianist donated to charity. What did I say, baby? Look, he donated some of that to charity, baby. But, hey, look, you weren't going to sue him, honey. He's going to make sure he's gonna make sure that you're going to keep his name clean up in the tabloid. Liberace's ex-partner attempted to sue him for palimony. And I guess if anybody knows, I can look that up too. Uh, is what's the difference? I guess alimony, A L I M O N Y, but this is pal, P A L I M O N Y, palimony. I guess it is considered like alimony, but palimony is somebody that you have lived with for a certain amount of time and have kind of, you know, I guess go for support. For the other person that you're living with, consider, you know, almost like, uh, I guess, legally bind to one another or something. So if anybody can comment down below if they know that. If not, that's fine. I can, I can look it up, but it would help out. Liberace fought for his final legal battles just years before his death. When a former employee and a live-in lover attempted to sue him, the performer for Palomone in 1977, 18-year-old Scott Thorson met Liberace through a dancer, Bob Black, a friend of Liberace's in Las Vegas show and choreographer, choreographer, <laughs> I'm, I'm mispronouncing that, I'm so sorry. But uh, Ray Annett, as Thorson writes in his 1988 book, Behind the Catalabria, My Life with Liberace, uh, the two established a report when Thorson, a former veterinarian's assistant, recommended a treatment for Liberace's aging and blind poodle. Later, the entertainer tearfully confessed his loneliness and inability to trust anyone to him and asked Thorson to work for him as a personal companion, the assistant. He would also appear in the Liberace's Vegas show, driving the performer on stage in a Royals, Royals, Royals Royce. And I should be able to pronounce the last Royce right because my son's middle name is Royce. But Royce Royce, uh, that's, you know, the very, very expensive car. <laughs> Thorson alleges that he and Liberace embarked on a five-year romantic relationship that Thorson assumed was, was, the assumed was mono, monogamous I guess I'm pronouncing that correctly I'm sorry y'all I know I pronounce, mispronounced probably four or five words in here please forgive me you know I'm doing the best I can monogamous monogamous I guess I'm pronouncing that correctly you know Liberace was a very very uh, you know uh very high up there performer and he was very classy so in this in this little thing I'm I'm reading you know that I've done you know uh input into for this doc series i mean it has some big words in here that i'm not used to hearing i'm just a little louisiana country girl so i'm not going to try to hide it. i'm just going to pronounce it the best way i can and y'all just going to have to forgive me if i can't pronounce some of the words because i'm just doing the best way i can Describing the entertainer as both generous and controlling, he claims that Liberace encouraged him to get plastic surgery in effort to mold him into a younger version of himself. According to Thorson, their relationship ended because of his drug use and Liberace's repeated infidelities. When Liberace fired him in 1982, Thorson filed a $13 million palimony suit, the first of its kind in the United States history. Despite denying Thorson was his lover in court depositions and repeatedly declaring his heterosexuality, Liberace settled out of court with his former employee awarding Thor Thorson $75,000 in cash, three cars, including a 1960s Royce, Ro Royce and two dogs. Huh, okay. Well, see, I didn't know about that part because actually my husband asked me about that 
last night when we was talking about this, and I didn't, I didn't know about that because I told him that I thought that Scott didn't, uh, didn't sue until after Liberace's death, you know. But now, knowing that, that he did settle, so that does say something. You know, if he settled with him and he got cars and had two dogs and, and all that, this says a whole lot more than what I knew. So I didn't know about that part. Liberace's tragic death. By the late 1986, there was no denying that Liberace was not a well man. Having lost considerable weight, the entertainer allied the concerns of his of his friends and acquaintances claiming that he had overdone a watermelon diet throughout November of that year he played radio city music at radio city music hall with the rockets in what would be his final concert performance although he publicly denied his sickness to the end his declining health could it be a nort he called Scott Thorsten to inquire about his former lover's health, stopping short of admitting that he had contracted AIDS. According to Liberace, an all-America boy, the entertainer discovered he was HIV positive. Y'all, that's so sad. And I don't want to cry because I'm a big crier. I've been real sensitive here lately. But just thinking of him trying to hide that, you know, he, he, he was a very proud man. You know, and back in those times, you know, you just didn't, I wasn't raised in those times, but I'm just saying, you know, consider the times that he was raised in and the type of home that he grew up, grew up in, you know, he, you know, it, in this biography, you know, as we're reading it, even his partner, Scott, and he, Liberace said he always felt like there was something wrong with him, like he was sick for being attracted to men and, you know, he wanted to even try to go into the priesthood and do all this stuff to try to overcome it. And he he did he thought that he was he had a mental illness, and then he did all this, you know, suing all these tabloids and all these magazines. It's almost putting tears in my eyes as I'm talking about it. I've just been real sensitive, but I'm just thinking about how he must have felt because. You know, nobody knew none of this. You know, he'd done so much, so much to keep his his family in his his own. He didn't want everybody to know it. You know, that's the sad thing. That I know we're talking about it right now. But, you know, it's something that has to be talked about because it's part of his life. But he, he just didn't, he didn't want his personal life, you know, out there. He wanted to hide that part of himself. And it really was only for him to put it out there if he wanted it put out there. But he didn't because he just didn't, he wasn't comfortable with it being out there. You know, so for him to have to go through all that in the end of his life, you know, be HIV positive and die of AIDS, and then all this to start all of suddenly start coming out, and you know all the all the magazines and the media, you know that it says in the old photo covers that Liberace died of AIDS, and, and they rushed his body, went and picked up his body, you know that on itself is just so sad for him, that you know that he had it, that he had to pass away like that. It, it, it's just so sad to me that, that you know, that and, and even he tried to cover it up to his friends saying he was on a watermelon diet and he had lost all this weight and he was sick and he had AIDS. It, it, it just, it breaks my heart. It really does. It breaks my heart because he was not that kind of man. He was a very, he wanted to be very, uh, you know, he dressed nice. He, he smelt nice. He looked nice. Uh, he carried himself nice. He, he was just, his, you know, very charismatic. And uh, that's just for so sad for him to have to his final days and after his death for that to have to come out that he passed away like that, you know, for him. And we're going to go ahead and go on. I'm sorry I went on a rant, but I just want to put my heart out there just thinking of him and, and being on the outside looking in. You know, as I've been reading this and watching some of his shows and stuff, it just, it really does break my heart for him because he didn't want nobody to, to, he, that's the reason why he kept this to himself, you know, all that time because he didn't want nobody to know his private life. Discovered he was HIV positive August of 1985. His condition worsened steadily over his remaining two years. On January the 3rd, 1987, Liberace entered the Eisenhower Medical Center suffering from pneumonia. Days after 
he was discharged to his Palm Springs home. Liberace died on February the 4th, 1987 at the age of 67. The, the denounce continued after Liberace's passing. Sadly, Liberace continued his lifelong denial of his sexuality to the end of his life. As detailed in Liberace's All America Boy, he considered his AIDS diagnosis a potential, potentially devastating blow to his public image and that's what's so sad about it you know his management and he kept it for so long from everybody and then whenever he passed away it's like everybody just kind of just i think it was i, I we're gonna go ahead and read this but i think it was some of the ones that was even supposed to be close to him to make more money myself to go to the because they're usually the first ones that go to the press you know i hate to say that but anytime we have these big performers like this that's just some of the best performers we'll ever see in our lifetime. When do all of them pop out? You know, you can just think of some. I can mention a lot that's went on the past nine to ten years. But they usually pop out right after that, that performer's dead. Because they're not going to do it while they're alive because they know better. But they're going to pop out and they're going to make a deal. You know, with the tabloids or the first one to call the news station to give this information because they're going to be—they're looking for that money and that payout. And I think that's what happened with Liberace, with the ones that he trusted. It was close to him in his little circle that only knew about this. I think that they went to that one person that that one or two that he trusted went and and, and they they you know. They, in other words, let the cat out of the bag. That's what I think. As soon as, as, soon as Liberace was put in the ground. When, when the Las Vegas Sun reported Liberace had AIDS, the entertainer's PR machine once again went into denial mode, threatening legal action. Bent on maintaining his wishes, Liberace's management had his death certificate falsified on paper and cardiac arrest was put the cause of death and the performer's body was rushed to the Forest Lawn Cemetery. Nevertheless, the truth would come out when the LA County Coroner's Office seized the body to perform an autopsy based on the suspicious suspicions of the performer he had a contagious disease. The postpartum analysts confirmed what the public had long intimated. Liberace's I'm so sorry about that, y'all. Hello, everybody. I'm so sorry if there was an interruption during that. This is actually my f fifth time trying to do this, and I just had to. I'm just going to be honest. Somebody beefed in.